Welcome to the GE Video Academy. This video demonstrates setting up and using the terminal server. SD allows a terminal server to be enabled on both COM1 and COM2. When terminal server is enabled on a remote, the access point can send IP messages to the remote via its IP address. The remote will receive the IP message and encapsulate it into a serial message that will pass through the enabled serial port connected to the RTU or PLC device. To enable terminal server operation, open a web browser to the remote radio. Navigate to the terminal server configuration windows by selecting configuration, then features. Enable Ethernet bridging at the top of this page by selecting on and commit configuration. Continue scrolling down to the terminal server COM2 configuration window. Select the proper mode. In this example, I will be sending RTU data via TCP to the remote and receiving a serial response on COM2. To do this, I will choose a mode of TCP server socket. Configure a local radio IP port, then decide between using a connection timeout or enabling persistent connection. When persistent connection is enabled, the connection will remain connected once it has been established. Review your choices and select commit configuration. Return to the overview screen and note the IP address of the remote radio. Open a web browser to the access point radio. Navigate to the Ethernet bridge configuration by selecting configuration then features. Enable Ethernet bridging by selecting on and commit configuration. Now I will configure a Modbus protocol polling tool, MDBus. The Modbus master I will set up to send RTU messages via TCP to the remote's IP address. I will send IP data on the remote's local IP port. The polling host, in this case a PC, is connected by Ethernet cable to the access point radio. I will enable a slave device on COM2 of the remote radio. This simulates the RTU or PLC device that would be connected in field installations. I will configure the MD bus slave to respond with the same register data the access point is requesting. I will ensure the baud rate and parity are consistent with the settings on the remote radio's COM2 port. To verify these settings, open a web browser to the remote radio and navigate to the configuration then communications ports. Scroll down to COM2 port settings. Verify COM2 settings match those of the MD bus slave, which represents the RTU or PLC device connected to COM2 of the SD radio. Turn the slave device on first, then turn the master device on. Note the radio is receiving TCP IP requests and responding with serial RTU data. The SD radio is now equipped with a front-end TCP to RTU conversion feature that enables TCP requests to be sent directly to the SD radio, not sent via, and will return the proper serial response without a conversion device. For more information on the SD internal Modbus TCP to RTU conversion feature available in firmware 509 plus, please refer to the internal Modbus TCP to RTU conversion video.